Helium is a chemical element with symbol He and atomic number 2. It is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, non-toxic, inert, monatomic gas that heads the noble gas group in the periodic table. Its boiling and melting points are the lowest among all the elements. Helium is named for the Greek god of the sun, Helios. Helium is the second lightest element and is the second most abundant element in the observable universe, being present at about 24% of the total elemental mass, which is more than 12 times the mass of all the heavier elements combined. Its abundance is similar to this figure in the Sun and in Jupiter. This is due to the very high nuclear binding energy of helium-4 with respect to the next three elements after helium. This helium-4 binding energy also accounts for why it is a product of both nuclear fusion and radioactive decay. Most helium in the universe is helium-4, and is believed to have been formed during the Big Bang. Large amounts of new helium are being created by nuclear fusion of hydrogen in stars. Liquid helium is used in cryogenics, particularly in the cooling of superconducting magnets, with the main commercial application being in MRI scanners. Helium's other industrial uses, as a pressurizing and purge gas, as a protective atmosphere for arc welding and in processes such as growing crystals to make silicon wafers, account for half of the gas produced. A well-known but minor use is as a lifting gas in balloons and airships. As with any gas whose density differs from that of air, inhaling a small volume of helium temporarily changes the timbre and quality of the human voice. In scientific research, the behavior of the two fluid phases of helium-4 is important to researchers studying quantum mechanics and to those looking at the phenomena, such as superconductivity, produced in matter near absolute zero. On Earth it is relatively rare, 5.2 ppm by volume in the atmosphere. Most terrestrial helium present today is created by the natural radioactive decay of heavy radioactive elements. As the alpha particles emitted by such decays consist of helium-4 nuclei, this radiogenic helium is trapped with natural gas in concentrations up to 7% by volume, from which it is extracted commercially by a low-temperature separation process called fractional distillation. Terrestrial helium is a non-renewable resource, and once released into the atmosphere, it is lost, as it readily escapes into space. History Scientific discoveries The first evidence of helium was observed on August 18, 1868 as a bright yellow line with a wavelength of 587.49 nanometers in the spectrum of the chromosphere of the Sun. The line was detected by French astronomer Jules Janssen during a total solar eclipse in Gunter, India. This line was initially assumed to be sodium. On October 20 of the same year, English astronomer Norman Lucky observed a yellow line in the solar spectrum, which he named the D3 Fraunhofer line because it was near the known D1 and D2 lines of sodium. He concluded that it was caused by an element in the Sun unknown on Earth. Lockyer and English chemist Edward Franklin named the element with the Greek word for the sun, lambda iota o micron sigma. In 1882, Italian physicist Luigi Palmieri detected helium on Earth, for the first time, through its D3 spectral line, when he analyzed the lava of Mount Vesuvius. On March 26, 1895, Scottish chemist Sir William Ramsay isolated helium on Earth by treating the mineral cleverite with mineral acids. Ramsay was looking for argon but, after separating nitrogen and oxygen from the gas liberated by sulfuric acid, he noticed a bright yellow line that matched the D3 line observed in the spectrum of the Sun. These samples were identified as helium by Lockyer and British physicist William Crookes. It was independently isolated from cleverite in the same year by chemists P. Theodor Cleve and Abraham Langlet in Uppsala, Sweden, who collected enough of the gas to accurately determine its atomic weight. Helium was also isolated by the American geochemist William Francis Hillebrand prior to Ramsey's discovery when he noticed unusual spectral lines. 
while testing a sample of the mineral uraninite. Hillebrand, however, attributed the lines to nitrogen. His letter of congratulations to Ramsey offers an interesting case of discovery and near-discovery in science. In 1907, Ernest Rutherford and Thomas Royds demonstrated that alpha particles are helium nuclei by allowing the particles to penetrate the thin glass wall of an evacuated tube, then creating a discharge in the tube to study the spectra of the new gas inside. In 1908, helium was first liquefied by Dutch physicist Heike Kamerlingh-Gonis by cooling the gas to less than 1 Kelvin. He tried to solidify it by further reducing the temperature but failed because helium does not solidify at atmospheric pressure. Ons student Willem Hendrik Heesum was eventually able to solidify 1 cc of helium in 1926 by applying additional external pressure. In 1938, Russian physicist Pyotr Leonidovich Karpatsay discovered that helium-4 has almost no viscosity at temperatures near absolute zero, a phenomenon now called superfluidity. This phenomenon is related to Bose-Einstein condensation. In 1972, the same phenomenon was observed in helium-3, but at temperatures much closer to absolute zero, by American physicists Douglas D. Osharoff, David M. Lee, and Robert C. Richardson. The phenomenon in helium-3 is thought to be related to pairing of helium-3 fermions to make bosons in an allergy to Cooper pairs of electrons producing superconductivity. Extraction and use after an oil drilling operation in 1903 in Dexter, Kansas produced a gas geyser that would not burn. Kansas State geologist Erasmus Howarth collected samples of the escaping gas and took them back to the University of Kansas at Lawrence where, with the help of chemists Hamilton Cady and David McFarland, he discovered that the gas consisted of by volume 72% nitrogen, 15% methane, 1% hydrogen, and 12% an unidentifiable gas. With further analysis, Cady and McFarlane discovered that 1.84% of the gas sample was helium. This showed that despite its overall rarity on Earth, helium was concentrated in large quantities under the American Great Plains, available for extraction as a byproduct of natural gas. This enabled the United States to become the world's leading supplier of helium. Following a suggestion by Sir Richard Threlfall, the United States Navy sponsored three small experimental helium plants during World War I. The goal was to supply barrage balloons with the non-flammable, lighter-than-air gas. A total of 5,700 cubic meters of 92% helium was produced in the program even though less than a cubic meter of the gas had previously been obtained. Some of this gas was used in the world's first helium-filled airship, the U.S. Navy's C-7, which flew its maiden voyage from Hampton Roads, Virginia, to Bowling Field in Washington, D.C., on December 1, 1921, nearly two years before the Navy's first rigid airship to be helium-filled. The Naval Aircraft Factory built us Shenandoah, itself flew for the first time in September 1923. Although the extraction process using low-temperature gas liquefaction was not developed in time to be significant during World War I, production continued. Helium was primarily used as a lifting gas in lighter-than aircraft. This use increased demand during World War II, as well as demands for shielded arc welding. The helium mass spectrometer was also vital in the atomic bomb Manhattan Project. The government of the United States set up the National Helium Reserve in 1925 at Amarillo, Texas, with the goal of supplying military airships in time of war and commercial airships in peacetime. Because of the Helium Control Act, which banned the export of scarce helium on which the U.S. then had a production monopoly, Together with the prohibitive cost of the gas, the Hindenburg, like all German Zeppelins, was forced to use hydrogen as the lift gas. Helium, use following World War II was depressed but the reserve was expanded in the 1950s to ensure a supply of liquid helium is a coolant to create.
oxygen, hydrogen rocket fuel during the space race and Cold War. Helium, use in the United States in 1965 was more than eight times the peak wartime consumption. After the Helium Act Amendments of 1960, the U.S. Bureau of Mines arranged for five private plants to recover helium from natural gas. For this helium conservation program, the Bureau built a 425-mile pipeline from Bushton, Kansas, to connect those plants with the government's partially depleted cliffside gas field near Amarillo, Texas. This helium-nitrogen mixture was injected and stored in the cliffside gas field until needed, when it then was further purified. By 1995, a billion cubic meters of the gas had been collected and the reserve was $1.4 billion in debt, prompting the Congress of the United States in 1996 to phase out the reserve. The resulting Helium Privatization Act of 1996 directed the United States Department of the Interior to empty the reserve, with sales starting by 2005. Helium produced between 1930 and 1945 was about 98.3% pure, which was adequate for airships. In 1945, a small amount of 99.9% .9 helium was produced for welding use. By 1949, commercial quantities of grade A 99.95% .9 helium were available. For many years the United States produced over 90% of commercially usable helium in the world, while extraction plants in Canada, Poland, Russia, and other nations produced the remainder. In the mid-1990s, a new plant in Arzu, Algeria, producing 17 million cubic meters began operation with enough production to cover all of Europe's demand. Meanwhile, by 2000, the consumption of helium within the U.S. had risen to above 15 million kilogram per year. In 2004 to 2006, two additional plants, one in Ras Lafin, Qatar, and the other in Skikdar, Algeria, were built. Algeria quickly became the second leading producer of helium. Through this time, both helium consumption and the costs of producing helium increased. From 2002 to 2007 helium prices doubled. As of 2012 the United States National Helium Reserve accounted for 30% of the world's helium. The reserve was expected to run out of helium in 2018. Despite that, a proposed bill in the United States Senate would allow the reserve to continue to sell the gas. Other large reserves were in the Hugoton in Kansas, United States and nearby gas fields of Kansas and the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. New helium plants were scheduled to open in 2012 in Qatar, Russia and the United States state of Wyoming but they were not expected to ease the shortage. In 2013, Qatar started up the world's largest helium unit. 2014 was widely acknowledged to be a year of oversupply in the helium business, following years of renowned shortages. Nasdaq reported that for Air Products, an international corporation that sells gases for industrial use, helium volumes remain under pressure due to feedstock supply constraints.